Hello, I want to share with you today um, a secret and a mission. Um, and it's in my title. I've got a technology background, um, and yet I struggle learning technology. And I think this is sometimes something of a dirty little secret. And I would claim that we all learn technology, um, surprisingly often, actually, and we all struggle surprisingly often. Um, some of us may struggle more than others, um, but we may be a bit embarrassed by our confusions. Um, and what I want to investigate is some of us have methods to learn more efficiently. Um, and the mission is, how can we help make things better? How can we help people learn technology more efficiently? So technology learning, there's a lot of it about. All over the world, in fact. Um, People are learning how to do things on computers and increasingly on smartphones and other gadgets as well. And people are using these technologies and so needing to learn about technologies in lots of different settings. So you might be using many different technologies at work, but you probably are at home as well. Um, think about home entertainment systems, just how to fit all those together. Um, banking and finance, health and fitness. Um, you may have the opportunity or even may be required to use certain computing technologies uh, when you go shopping in airports, in banks, in libraries, in health clinics. So there's all these new technologies, all these new gadgets coming along all the time, and they may be applications for your phone or computer programs or web-based technologies. And then even the ones you've got are constantly being upgraded, so you've got to learn new stuff with that. And there's all those extra features that you've never quite got round to using on the applications you're already using. And they may actually help you if you can figure out how to get it all to work. So for some of us, we may even be learning a new technology issue every single day. And when it works fine, we won't even notice because it all works. It's only when things go wrong and we get frustrated and maybe even depressed by our technologies that we become aware of them. So it's all different kinds of people office workers, scientists, a janitor applying for a job may well have to apply online nowadays, so may need to go to the public library in order to send in an application. Uh, it could be computer science techie types, or it could be seniors who suddenly got interested in genealogy and want to learn about some of the latest technologies that will help them look up um, where their ancestors came from. So we all get confused all the time. Um, and there's no way we can go on a training course for every single technology that we need to learn through the course of our lives. So what are we going to do about it? Well, computational metacognition. That's just a fancy term to say that we should be thinking about our own thinking about technologies. How do we go about learning new computer technologies? Um, how can we reflect on our own learning? And how can we get better at doing these kinds of things? So some people seem to be really good at learning technologies. What is it that they're doing? Is it magic? Do they have a special technology gene? Or could we learn from their techniques um, and use them ourselves and teach them to other people? So this is a big research interest of mine that I think has huge practical implications for lots of people. I'm particularly interested in adults, so I'm going to focus on the richest 4 billion people on the planet who happen to be using computer technologies. It's not everybody, but it's an awful lot of people who could benefit from learning how to learn new computer technologies in a better way. Now, I sort of describe it as being this sort of depressing thing as a whole flood of new technologies, always having to learn new things. Um, there is a silver lining to that, that we can use computers to help us learn how to use computers. So one thing you can do if you're stuck is you can go into Google and if you can figure out the right phrase to type into Google and if you're lucky, you may be able to find a web page, um, a set of instructions, maybe even a video telling you exactly what it is you need to know in language that you can understand. Um, and if you are lucky like that, well done you. That feels great. Um, but sometimes it doesn't work quite as nicely as that. Um, you may not actually know what to type into Google. You may try things and they don't work. There's actually a set of skills of how can you compose a query into Google or other search engines so that you're more likely to increase the odds that you'll find something useful. 
And then you'll get a big pile of results coming up. Which ones do you trust? Um, which ones are going to be useful? How do you assess the quality of what's out there? And that's another set of skills that in library information science we call information literacy. Um, a set of useful skills. Some people just pick it up. Some people aren't aware that there are ways of doing it. They just think anybody can search. You either search or you don't search. No, there's ways of searching much more productively. And even if you can figure out what are the best queries to type in, even if you can figure out which of these results are most likely to be useful for you, you still may not get a complete answer. You may get something that's a little bit out of date or solves half your problem. So there's a second set of skills. Can you make use of half an answer? Will half an answer help you to fiddle around with the technology to fill in the gaps that weren't completely answered online? Those, I think, are an important set of skills coming up into the future. And I have a prediction that pretty much everybody will be doing this kind of tech learning for themselves um, and for their family members. If you get designated the techie person in your family, everybody comes and asks you for help. Um, helping your work colleagues. If you work in a public library, helping patrons. If you're a data curator, scientists also struggle with these kind of computing technologies. If you're working in a startup or an established business, there's always ways of being more efficient. Can we actually improve the productivity of the workplace by people saying, you know, I'm sure there's a better way of doing this than what we're doing at the moment. I'll just go online and see if there's a new application we should be using or if we could be using applications in a better way. So if you know how to do this, you can benefit society both in corporate settings, non-profit settings, and even in your own family. So that's all well and good, um, but how are you going to do that? Well, I've said that information searching is now actually part of technology learning. You can search for answers. And, like, you know, who knows an awful lot about searching for information? Who knows an awful lot about information literacy, about assessing the quality of what's going on? Well, we do in schools of library information science in the information schools. We've got a lot to offer to the entire world here, not just to our alums, but to everybody, because everybody's going to be doing this technology learning. So I think this falls in with our classic iSchool missions. We have many of them, but they're all around this intersection of people, information, and technology. And getting the damn technology to work in the first place seems to me a core key thing we should be doing first before we can do all the other wonderful things afterwards. So we've got both the intellectual resources, we know how to do this, and we've got the desire to help. We have this philosophy of service, goes back to librarianship, it's over 100 years. People have been trying to help people get access to information. And that was traditionally by librarians in libraries, helping people to get access to information in books. We're still doing that, it's still very important. But now I think we've got these extra but strongly related needs and opportunities help people to find out how to use computer technologies. It's still a search skill, it's still a, a process of making sense of how much you trust things, and it does involve an awful lot of technology fiddling. We've got to help people feel comfortable about learning, reflecting on their own learning, and trying things out to learn as they go. So the quick summary for computational metacognition is it's about thinking about your own thinking. It's about thinking about how you learn technology. And then, after you've thought about what you're doing now, you look at what other people have done, and you say, oh, could I learn a bit better in the future? Not just more, but can I learn better and faster? Can I take advantage of some of the skills that I've seen other people doing? And then my challenge is, how might I build on these, this work to share the best practices to build other technologies to help you so that all of us can help ourselves to learn better, but also to help other people to learn better. This is part of our service mission. We want to help other people get access to information. In this case, it's access to learning how to use technologies better.